Hi, everybody. Brian Norcross here in Miami Beach. That's South Beach there, the ocean just on the other side of those buildings. I want to tell you about a hurricane mystery that's mostly unraveled now. And it's about a hurricane that hit right back there on August 16th, 1888, according to the official record book. But I've studied Miami Beach history. I've read a lot of books about Miami Beach history, and I don't remember any of them talking about any kind of great hurricane. In the record book, it says it was a Category 3 at least that hit on August 16, 1888. And it's hard to imagine that that happened and there wouldn't be more record of it in the regular history, not the meteorological history, but the regular history. So I decided we needed to take a look at this Miami Beach hurricane history and ask the question, did it happen or not? Well, here's the official record. According to the database, it actually came ashore in Miami Beach. There you see on August 16th, 1888. And there's Miami, there's Fort Lauderdale, and this is one of the major causeways of Miami Beach, I-195. So that's where the database puts it as a Category 3, at least with 125 mile per hour winds. Here's the official uh, tracking map from 1888, and you see more or less the system coming in to Miami, and then it loops around just to the west of New Orleans and comes into Louisiana. Well, back in 1888, not a whole lot of people lived here in Miami Beach, so the question is, where did that record come from that uh, caused the people doing the analysis of the old records to assume it was a Category 3 hurricane? Well, one thing is, there's the track from the original 1888 uh, tracking map. Here's another one. This is a book called Florida's Hurricane History. It's a very uh, reputable book that I look at quite a bit for facts about old hurricanes. And look what it says. The storm surge was reported at 14 feet on the beaches near Miami. Well, I contacted the author of that book and said, where did that actually come from? And he gave me the name of another book. And here it is, Florida Hurricanes and Tropical Cyclones. And there you see 14-foot storm surge in the August 1888 hurricane. Well, we tracked that back to a NOAA reference, an 1987 book, and guess what? It's not in there. So this seems to be where that 14-foot storm surge came from, and I think it was a mistake. Because when we look at more information in the history of Miami Beach, Here's what we find. First of all, turns out there was uh, somebody here. There were several people here in Miami Beach in 1888. And uh, a group of official people were in the Biscayne Bay House of Refuge that opened in 1876. And these houses of refuge were along the coast and they were put there because people would get shipwrecked and they'd come up to the beach from because they ran their ship into the reef, the Florida Reef out there, and somebody had to be there to rescue them. So this, these houses of refuge were built, and the one in Miami Beach was built right here, and we have an old map of it near something called Atlantic Heights. Well, if you know Miami Beach at all, it turns out that's 71st Street in modern Miami Beach right there, so we know where it was, and that's essentially where the hurricane is, according to the official record, uh, described as coming ashore. Well, there were some records from there, and a historian named Thelma Peters, who's a famous uh, Miami historian from uh, days gone by, looked at the official record from there, kept by the station keepers uh, there. They kept a log. And look what she had in her synopsis of those station keeper logs. She said that on August 18th, 1888, that's two days after the hurricane supposedly came ashore, Two local people, somebody named H. Smith uh, and then somebody named Fields and also somebody named Burke. So three people arrived by boat uh, at this, uh, this uh, station here, this uh, lifeguard station, essentially. And I'm thinking, well, if there was a big hurricane, Category 3 hurricane, they weren't going to be in shape to be entertaining two days later. And besides that, the ocean would be so rough that people coming in small boats from Key West in one case, and this lake here refers to Lake Worth, which is up by West Palm Beach. I don't think that could have happened if a big hurricane happened. So that was the first thing that set me looking. 
And then I talked about this on uh, my podcast, and one of the podcast listeners says, well, you know, those logs are available. You can get them from the National Archive. And this listener told me how to do that. And so that's what I did. And here is the actual log from the Biscayne Bay House of Refuge. That's the one in Miami Beach. I'm going to summarize all this for you in just a second. So the, it's not really important to remember all these details. But the point is that he talked about a gale coming in and then the gale continuing at noon. And then at sunset, the wind switching around, but still having what they described as a gale. And they didn't have any wind instruments. So they just did this all by description. And it turns out there was a house of refuge just up the way in Fort Lauderdale. Again, opened in 1876. There's a picture of it. And uh, if you know Fort Lauderdale, it was right by Sunrise Boulevard. It turns out where something called the Bonnet House is today, they found an old wellhead from that House of Refuge, so they know exactly where it was. Well, we have that log as well. And notice the winds here. It was blowing a gale, they said, with very heavy surf. And then it has switched, still blowing a gale at noon. And then blowing heavy was the description at sunset. And again, we'll look at that summary here in just a second. And then let's continue on up the coast one more step to the next one. This was in Delray Beach. So they had them about every 25 miles or so up the coast. This one called the Orange Grove House of Refuge, just north of East Atlantic Avenue in Delray Beach. Notice they were all built to be about the same. Rome was a family uh, living there. The family lived on the downstairs and the shipwreck victims stayed in a dormitory on the upstairs of these houses. Well, the station keeper there recorded on the August 16th, 1888, a gale from the northeast in the morning, a hurricane from the northeast at noon, and then a gale from the northeast at uh, in the evening. But then in the comments noted that the winds went from northeast to southeast about 3 p.m. So I'm thinking that this was a southeast wind here and just was noted wrong in the logs and those old logs quite often you see that. So to summarize all those three in uh, Delray Beach, Fort Lauderdale and Miami Beach in the morning, all the winds are coming in from the northeast. So the storm is offshore. But then at noon, we get all these different wind directions. So in Delray Beach, still the northeast uh, in Fort Lauderdale, the south southwest and then in Miami Beach from the northwest. So what must have happened there? In order to get this kind of a wind shift, uh, bearing in mind that if they put down noon, it doesn't mean it was taken exactly at noon, but let's assume it was approximately in the middle of the day. To get a south-southwest wind like that, you have to have a circulation that's over here somewhere to get that kind of wind. It's got to be pretty close to that station to get that big a wind shift that was noted in the record. So if we had a circulation over here, we would get that northeast wind and we could get a northwest wind coming on the back side of it. So uh, the, even if the timing was off just a little bit, some of that makes sense. And then by sunset, everything is coming in generally from the southeast. So that means the system has gone on by by that point. So this kind of pins it down to a track somewhere near Fort Lauderdale. Then the question becomes, how strong could it be? Remember that in Delray Beach, they're reporting a hurricane, again, without wind instruments. So let's assume it was stronger there. But another thing we know about this day is we know that there was very strong high pressure to the north. So what we think is that the winds were strong north of the storm, not so strong south of the storm, and it tracks somewhere near Fort Lauderdale. That would account for these uh, these winds and also some other winds that were measured uh, farther north up in uh, Jupiter and Sebastian had strong winds all coming in uh, from the northeast. All right, now let's take a look at what the weather map was, the official weather map from 8 a.m. that morning. So uh, more or less where these winds were all from the northeast here. And notice that there is no storm noted on that map. So whatever was going on offshore here at 8 a.m. probably was not very strong, that it didn't show up in any kind of record so that they they noted a, a low pressure system of significance and the only winds noted here were key west from the north 
and Jacksonville from the northeast. So with this big, strong, high-pressure system up here, then we get uh, this low that was offshore that we know about now, bringing in winds this way and this way, but it couldn't have been very strong, it doesn't look like, or it probably would have been noted on the map, as you'll see uh, later on. Now, there was another reading that was taken in Florida at that time, a place called Fort Meade, kind of uh, southeast of uh, Lakeland, and it turns out a soldier there at Fort Meade actually uh, saved some readings for us, and here's what he reported. He reported a northeast wind, at 9 a.m. At 3 p.m., he reported uh, a northeast wind. At 9 p.m., he also reported a northeast wind, and then southeast at 9 a.m. the next day. But that northeast wind there is a suspect. I think that was actually a southeast wind, and I think the storm, as we talked about, came near Fort Lauderdale and went by here. Uh, and uh, that would account for the winds being northeast, the first part of the day up until 3 p.m. as it's passing by down here and then going southeast when the storm is offshore here coming from the southeast, if that really is wrong. And I think it was because we uh, actually have a weather map from 8 p.m. and notice where the low pressure system is noted off the southwest coast of Florida, which fits with our track over Fort Lauderdale, coming over this way, and ending up there at 8 p.m. at night. So that would mean that Fort Meade uh, observation would have been wrong. We would have had a southeast wind. Here you see at Jupiter, the wind was southeast. Here you see at Key West, the wind was from the south. And we can look over here. We see at Key West, it was south at 24 miles per hour. So if the storm, whatever it was, was up there with a south wind uh, at Key West, we go, okay, that uh, makes some sense then that uh, the storm is located actually to the west of Key West in order to get a south wind coming in there and probably not too terribly strong if it's that close by and the wind is only uh, 24 miles an hour. And it turns out we have another report, and this kind of confirms all this. This was from the New, uh, New Orleans uh, Times-Picayune newspaper, reported a ship called the E.B. Ward encountered a gale blowing from the south off the Tortugas. So that's over in here. The Tortugas would be just west of Key West with the south wind. So again, confirming that the storm was in this area here uh, on the 16th. So it had to be on the evening of the 16th. So we get a pretty good confirmation. So adding to that, one more uh, fact that we know about is that none of the houses of refuge reported damage in the log. So other times when there were big storms, they would report some kind of uh, minor damage. But uh, on this date, the 16th, none of those houses of refuge on the east coast of Florida reported damage. And of course, as we noted, visitors arrived by boat there on the 18th. One more interesting fact, that the storm couldn't have been very strong uh, off Fort Lauderdale. Maybe it was a strong uh, tropical storm or a Category 1 because the Miami Beach and the Fort Lauderdale House of Refuge were essentially destroyed by the Great Miami Hurricane of September 1926. And that Great Miami Hurricane produced a storm surge of about 10 feet. Well, the exact height of storm surge in historic records is always a little iffy. Remember that this one was reported as being 14 I think what happened was somehow the 1926 uh, report got mixed in with the 1888 storm, and so that's what uh, threw the whole thing off, and it was based on that storm surge report that the official readings of a Category 3 hurricane were put in the official uh, database. So here's my uh, take on it. I, I think the storm was weaker up here near Fort Lauderdale, moved offshore, and it moved across the state pretty quickly. There's the original track in the database over Miami Beach, and then coming up here closer to uh, Fort Myers and offshore. When you look at it kind of close up like that, it looks uh, fairly different, but when you look at the wider view, you see that the two tracks are not really that 
terribly different, but because now we have some uh, good uh, authoritative information from the southeast coast, I think it can be fine-tuned a little more. So I've sent all this information to the National Hurricane Center and to the folks that actually analyze it officially, and they can do some analysis that I uh, can't do, and uh, they're going to look at it, and eventually we'll get the official word on the 1888 hurricane uh, with COVID and other hurricanes to analyze. It, it hasn't been done yet, but I'm crossing my fingers that uh, they're going to agree with me and uh, we'll see what happens. But there you see the evidence and that's what you have to look at for these old storms is track down historical evidence, not just the uh, meteorological evidence that we normally look at with storms today. So I hope you like the history and um, let's all see how this turns out. Thanks and uh, have a great conference.